Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liana if you're new and I've been making a lot of press on nails lately. Just wanted to take a second to let you guys know about my Instagram, Liana Nailed It, and show you the nails I've been making. I am selling them from $20 to $35 each set um, and they all come with free shipping. If you like any of them, please consider following me and ordering some and you can even DM me on Instagram if you have any questions or a specific request for a design. I'll make you literally whatever you want as long as I can do it. I'm only taking orders through Google Forms and payments through Venmo and Zelle right now just because it's such a small scale thing so I don't have a website and don't really plan to make one unless I start getting um, a whole lot of orders. I tried my best to make the order process very very straightforward and as easy as can be and I went ahead and left the Google Form in the description box below so please consider supporting me. <laughs> Anyway, today I thought I'd show you how I make a set so you can really see the behind the scenes and the effort that I put into this whole process. And if you do order, you'll see what you'd be paying for. If not, then you can just consider this another one of my regular nail art videos and you can just sit back and enjoy. So let's get started. So the first thing I do after I mount them is file off the surface just to make sure that the polish really stays on there. The first time I saw this being done was when I got my nails done in a salon for like the second time in my life. And I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? But it really makes such a world of difference and it's such a thin layer too. Um, I wanna make sure that the nails I'm making are not chipping or cracking or peeling off. There's no chance and no way. So after that's done, I take a big fluffy brush like so and just dust off the nails so that when I'm applying the polish, the dust doesn't get trapped and you don't get a really lumpy nail and you also don't contaminate your polish um, after that I'll apply base coat before when I did my nails I never understood the necessity of base coat but oh my goodness once I forgot base coat and my nail polish just slid right off it was devastating especially with gel polish it's very very crucial so I never ever skip this step Then I cure that for 30 seconds under the lamp. Today's design is just gonna be this one purple marble nail that I posted a while ago that I only had one nail of because I messed up the other ones. So I thought today would be a good day to do a set of 10. We're gonna start off with the lighter purple color and put that all over the base just so we get that opacity. And then after that's cured, we're gonna go ahead with the design. And what I do is put this jelly polish just at the tip because we do want that ombre effect. And then the purple at the base so that we can blend that together now if you're wondering what jelly polish is it's honestly the coolest thing i literally just found out about it very recently it's just a clear colored polish so it's see-through and you can do so much with this it's actually really exciting <laughs> so after that's done i'll just take a small brush like this and just kind of blend it together just mixing it with some gentle strokes not too small to the point where there are no swirls but not too large to the point where we're mixing it into a homogeneous color we still want the swirls to show up After I did that and cured, I went ahead and added another layer just to darken that purple at the tip and also since the jelly polish is see-through, adding more than one layer of this design is a very good thing to do and adds a lot more dimension than if it were just one layer. After that's done, I top coat them and cure. After that, I take them off the mounts. The putty is pretty sticky sometimes, but I discovered that the key to not getting any residue is to just take it off really fast, like rip it off, which I do. And at this point, I'll file around the nail if necessary, just to neaten it up. And then I'll take this round filing tip from my electric nail file and just hand file the underneath of the nails. The reason I'm not actually using my drill is because it's too fast for such a small surface area. So I find it very hard to direct the drill in that one specific area and not like slip so I just do it by hand which works perfectly fine for me the reason I'm doing this is um, remember how in the beginning I was filing the surface of the nails so that the polish would stay on the press-on well this is for the press-on to stay on your real nail when you put it on with nail glue the extra friction just really make sure that it's on there really really good and I like to do this to ensure that they're ready for application and they will stay on your hands for as long as possible. 
Then I put them in this very, very sturdy box like so. I'm only halfway done, but I like putting the first five in the box anyway, just so they're all in one place and I don't lose them. And also because they look pretty and I just get excited. Honestly, mounting them in the box is probably my favorite part of this whole process. And then we're gonna do the other five. Um, there's actually another easier way to achieve this marble effect, which I actually prefer, uh, which is what I'm gonna do now. I just wanted to show both ways. So I applied a base coat and then that first layer of purple. And what I did instead of popping it to cure right away was left it wet and then added a thick drop of the jelly polish right in the center of the nail right there and then blended it outwards. I wanted to focus most of the product at the tip and maintain that ombre effect. So I took most of the product to the tip and then just diffuse the rest and this works pretty well. As I went on, I actually added more polish, both the jelly color and the lighter purple, uh, just whatever I saw fit and wherever I felt like putting it. Um, and you can really see the opacity just build up as you go. And that's pretty much it for this method. The great thing about gel polish is that it won't dry until you're ready for it to dry, so you can really just take your time with it, and if you hate what you're doing, then you can just wipe it off and start over with no problem at all. The finishing step is of course top coat, and then I'll take them off, file the bottoms, and mount them in the box. Then I'll make sure to put a tube of nail glue in the box, and uh, of course I will add an instruction card as well. And that is pretty much how I make a set of nails. Now I know these are really, really long, so long that I can't even function in them, but there is a section in my order form where you can specify the length you want, so you can have them as short or as long as you want. Um, if you don't feel like specifying that, then that's totally fine too. These nails are not too thick at all, so it is perfectly fine to just get them full length and then trim them to your liking once they're on your hands with a regular nail clipper and a file. So that's it for today's video. Just a quick reminder that the order form and my Instagram are in the description box below. So if you are interested at all, please check it out and consider placing an order. And um, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Breaking news got me breaking.